Welcome to another exciting, celebrating, it's always celebrating after a win, Coach's Show with Coach Damon Floyd of the Bradley Central Bears. Coach, uh, I know you've had a couple days reprieve from, uh, you know, rest and all that. That endurance out there in the humidity was unreal, but you got a win. And uh, I know a hard-fought win. Yeah. Um, you mustered up a lot of things. I know you talked about being unsettled after the game because there's things you want to improve on but it was a win. Can you talk a little bit about that regrouping during the game? Yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about our players, honestly, and our coaching staff. I mean, it, they never gave up. You know, they, they always had this feeling that they were going to come back and win, and obviously we did. But, you know, as a coach, you look at the negatives. And to be in the situation we were was very frustrating. Uh, you got to give Walker Valley credit. Coach Aikens had his team prepared, and, and they come out and took it to us, and they were more physical than, than us in the first half. And, you know, to go down 21 nothing. Uh, was very frustrating, like I mentioned. But to see our kids stick together, come back and get a win like that, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. You're trying to win football games, but the way they did it, sticking together, you know, uh, working hard, taking care of their responsibility, uh, that's pretty gratifying as a coach when you go back and really look at it. Um, we had a lot of moving parts. You know, with Javen going out, Aiden, Aiden moving to quarterback, it takes a toll on the back end of our defense because they were playing those positions. Right. And just to be quite honest, we've taken a hit there depth-wise. So we had a lot of guys that's in a new position there. And So talking um, about that, I felt like that was one of the chinks in the armor that oh they yeah. found. They found that over the middle deep and over the middle short. Yes. Uh, that seemed to be a pace. They were trying to come back to that, and they, they, they were successful in the first quarter. Yeah, in this day and age in football, the way spread offenses are, and Coach Aikens has been around, it's, you're going to find out what coverage people are in, and you're going to be able to attack it. There's weak spots in every defense. Uh, so we, we weren't as multiple as we normally are because of some of the position changes we had to do on the fly. And uh, so that kind of hurt us. But the thing that's frustrating as a coach is the fact that we're, we got them in third and long. So it's right. third and seven or more. Right, right. You know, so when it was a third and 23, there's a third and 12, there's a third and, uh, another third and 12. We're giving up touchdowns when all we need to do is just let them catch it for five or six and, 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 they're, and then make a tackle. They're getting behind us. And uh, those are the things we got to improve on. Uh, we're working on that hard to get that fixed. Uh, and honestly, we, we'll probably see a couple freshmen that will be playing in the secondary this week. And, um, you know, th they'll have their opportunity to uh, show what they can do. I thought in the second quarter, and this is me speaking from watching it pretty precociously because I wanted to see some uh, things shifting around watching it, not so much from coaches' eyes, but uh, just the depth of the different players moving around in the second quarter. You guys looked a lot fresher than you did in the first quarter. What was going on? I wish I could put my finger on it because you never want to start that way. Uh, yeah. I, I think we were probably a little bit overconfident if we're all being honest. And, you know, you can't, you, could, you should always respect your opponent. That's something we preach over and over. It's about us doing our job, no matter who the opponent is. But once again, you're dealing with 15, 16, 17 sure. year old, 18 year old kids. So um, there was mistakes that we made, but Walker Valley had a lot to do with that. So right. I give them credit on that end. Uh, as far as adjustment scheme-wise, there's always some in the game that you change a little bit because, you know, without scrimmages and, and not having many games on video, you don't know exactly what they're going to do to attack you. So, you know, throughout the game you make all those adjustments. But our kids did a really good job of adjusting, understanding the game plan, and then executing. So at the end of the second quarter, you saw Aiden get a little more confident. Oh, yeah. Brought the ball all the way down the field, got a really strong score. And... Seemed like that confidence continued in the second half. You know, you saw him just improve on each moment and also the players giving him those adjustments and making, yeah. making a difference. And um, I don't know what to say about uh, the Wilson kid. You know, just well, he's really, a stud. Yeah, just he's amazing. a stud. And of course, that's attributed to the blocking. It is. There was very good blocking up front. Jackson was finding the I mean, holes. He's a physical he's, runner. He's but. breaking tackles. He's outrunning people. So he's got a lot of ability. Uh, speaking of Aiden, Aiden just needs some experience, which he's getting. And uh, we've, we've got all the confidence in the world in Aiden. He's got the ability to play quarterback and play it at a high level. And I think once you see him settle in a little bit, then uh, what oh, yeah. he can do for us offensively. And the team's going to rally around him. And uh, it was nice to see him lead some, you know, some big drives to win a football game. Yeah, it seemed like he just recharged every yeah. time he got the ball. So it's towards the end of the game. Team gets the ball, scores. Walker Valley gets the ball, scores. Back and forth a little bit there. We come down to the last six, four seconds of yeah. the game. What is going through your head as they're setting up? And I, I know you took a, a couple timeouts yeah. to kind of, you know, build that uh, anxiety a little bit. 
But what's going through your mindset right there? And it would only been for a tie. It wasn't yeah. to win the game. Well, at that point, when he got when he got it down in field goal position, we thought, you know, let's let's keep him out of the end zone, try to get it to overtime, and then, you know, it's zero zero. So, uh, I think our kids did a good job of not letting him in the end zone, but we didn't do a very good job of executing defensively to let that drive happen. We were giving them way too much, yeah, it moved too many yards, yeah. The field. And yeah. Uh, that's once again and a that's, couple of penalties that kind of instigated yeah yeah and you know that's part of the game and and, right. and we got to clean those that stuff up but um they executed you know and you got to give tucker pope a lot of credit Absolutely. i mean he, he he is he's doing a really good job at quarterback and when you got a good quarterback that's what's going to happen and they got kids that can catch and they're you know ever seems like every time we got a blitz off uh their offense line did a good job protecting him finding open holes but you know at the end of the game you, you want to just try to make him make a field goal and uh you know, it's a lot of pressure in that game situation, but, um, you know, we did enough to win at the end. So I walked away with the win of that game. We're going to take a commercial break right now. Be right back. Welcome back. Bradley Central football here with Gwen Schroyer, and this is Coach Colby Dills. Colby. Uh, Coaching the JV squad had an outstanding win this week on Monday night. Tell us a little bit about the foundation of playing a local rivalry as a JV team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, anytime you play Walker Valley in anything, it's a, it's a big game. It's a big rivalry, uh, being the only two county schools uh, in Bradley County. So uh, anytime we play them, we know our guys are going to be up for it, and, and they came out ready to play. And these night. guys have been playing each other for years. They know each other. Yeah. Might even be some family on both sides. Yeah, I mean, that's always something to could consider. Could have been could have been teammates at Ocoee Middle School, uh, but for or the most part, yeah, most part they played against each other, Lake Forest and, and Ocoee Middle. So. Uh, you know, they, they've played against each other for a lot of years. Now. And this is the proving ground for the varsity level. If you're doing well at this level, uh, you can jump into a position yes. either as a backup role or in some cases filling in uh, right away. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, good, um, it's a good evaluation of, of how they could play on Friday nights uh, in the future. And I guess also if you have some uh, students that move from another area and you really don't know how they fit into your own mm -hmm. scheme this is a good way for them to prove that thing out too oh yeah definitely it's a good evaluation for okay it. so you had walker valley in the sights and we had a good win mm -hmm. last week on thursday night tell me a little bit about your plan and strategy going into this game uh it's gonna be the same thing uh you know i think coach coach Stanford does a good job with the with the offense on jv and, and coach Payne runs the defense and, and they both do a good job. They get our guys lined up and, and ready to play. So uh, I couldn't do it without them. And you know, they're, they're just very well prepared. And what's your moniker normally? Is it a running game, passing game, mix it up? Uh, you know, I, I like to run the ball, um, kind of open up the pass. Uh, this is kind of really what the defense gives us. And uh, Stanford, Brett, Coach Stanford's very good at uh, identifying the defense and, and taking what the defense gives us. And you're not gonna have a good pass or running game unless you have outstanding offensive line. Yes, everything starts and ends with the offensive line. Uh, name some players that are conditioned well and playing good for you. Uh, we got Tyler Moore's playing really good for us. He's playing center. Uh, Alex Dayton's the right guard. Uh, then we've got um, JT Crumley, which is, he, he's only been an offensive lineman for just a couple weeks. He's playing left uh, guard. He's doing really well. Then we got two young guys, uh, Luke Keith and Rodney Williams. They, they mix it up at tackle. Uh, and then we got Landon Hicks. He's playing left tackle for us. So uh, those five or six rotate in, and they're doing a great job. Nice. So what's your key offensive scheme in the backfield? Who are your players there working that? Um, you know, we had, we had Jackson Wilson before, but he, he's going to be a Friday night only guy now. So we're going we're gonna to call upon uh, Carter Clayton some. Um, and he's just a few snaps. He's a, he's a snap away from, from being the guy on Friday night. And then we've got uh, some, some young freshman running backs that we're very excited about. Uh, Simon Mullis and Mason Thompson and, and A.J. Williams. And that's three pretty good freshman running backs. And we're excited for the future with them. Awesome. And who's your quarterback? Uh, quarterback's Jacob Hudson. He had a great game last night. I think he was four for seven, uh, 159 yards, two touchdowns, no uh, INTs. So he, he played really really well for us last night. So we, so we look to build off that. So you play a game like that and you're winning, you know, pretty – Mm -hmm. wide open and does it spell out that you start going into your your depth 
to let some other players, you know, jump up to those top positions? Yeah, we, we got we got into our uh, we got pretty deep on our depth chart last night. Um, the plan was to get even deeper in, in the fourth quarter, and then the game was called at the end of the third quarter right. due to due to lightning. So we didn't get as deep as we wanted to, but we got, a lot of kids got some some playing time that hadn't before. So, so final score was uh, final score was forty to six. Forty six. And did Walker Valley score? Field goals, or did they actually? They score scored a, a yeah. They scored a touchdown. Uh, one of the last plays, and then they they try to go for two and, and didn't get it, so okay. ended up with six. Okay. So next on the horizon, we go up to Heritage Friday night. Yeah, for varsity. And yeah. do you also play Heritage in the JV game on Monday, or do you have somebody else? No. Uh, next Monday, Labor Day, we'll actually play McMinn. Okay. Um, the reason why is because varsity will play McMinn the la week ten, uh, so. By the time we would play them for JV, JV would be over. I got you. Uh, so we'll play McMinn Monday, and it's actually going to be at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, both teams agree to that okay. on Labor Day. That way everyone can have the afternoon and nights nice. to, to, to be so off. So we hope to see the stadium full for that game. Oh, yes. Uh, there's a lot of accountability when it comes to families coming in because it's not as full as yeah. the varsity game, but you still want to have a lot of fans. Still a lot of there fans, yeah. So good game, 11 o'clock on Monday night coming up. Uh, should be an outstanding day for play. I understand we're going to have a clear weekend, yeah. maybe even a cooler weekend, less humidity. So, yeah. so I hope 11 o'clock, hoping in. it's a little little cooler in the morning time. So. so let's talk about you just a little bit. Your <laughs> formative years here at Bradley, you played hard, dug in, you know, got that role of, yeah. you know, being fierce and, you know, battle master and, you know, yeah. beefing it up. Go on to college. You come back to Bradley. What does it mean? For you to be a coach at the school that you played at, uh, it means everything. Uh, I love Bradley more than more than just about anything in life, and you know it's a lot of tradition, a lot of pride here at Bradley, and you know I'm just I'm very lucky and fortunate to be a part of uh, the tradition at Bradley Central, and and uh, I think we're extremely privileged to have you come back, and you know your heart for Bradley speaks loudly when mm -hmm. you're coaching these players. It exudes, and people recognize that. I think you know it's a it's a wonderful thing have Coach Dills on the sideline both Friday night mm -hmm. and Monday nights. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to share? You want to talk about any family? I know you got a brother that's exited the city here recently. Yeah, i got a brother. He's actually at uh, Kentucky Christian University uh, playing football up there. and um, He's only been up there for just a couple weeks, so he, he's just kind of getting Are they gonna his get feet to up play? on the, uh, I think they're playing in the springtime. Okay. Yeah, so right now they're just doing conditioning, so he's never had those – Five or six a.m. Uh, workout, so he, right. he's getting he adjusted to that. Was a big part that. of what we did last year. Yeah, he's a good, he's a he's a good player. I'm, I was proud of his effort. He he always went 100 percent, and as a brother, I was I was really proud of him. Very nice. You got any yeah. other family members or? Uh, I got a sister, uh, Caitlin. Um, she she is studying pre law at Austin P. Nice. Uh, she's she's the and brains. They did get to play this weekend. Did you watch? Yeah, that I've game? seen that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, Katie's the brains of of the of the siblings, so very proud of her too. She, she's, she makes me proud every day. Nice, okay. Well, Kobe Dills, our JV coach, also coaches, what position coach do you have? I coach, uh, varsity wise, I coach the running backs. Coach the running back, which yeah. is a huge part of Bradley's game. Oh, so yeah. thank you for your effort and working on that. We love, 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 love Coach Dills and what you're <laughs> doing for Bradley. So thank you for that. Thank you. And that's all we have for this interview with Coach Dills. I'm Gwen Troy along with Coach Dills. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to the Coach Damon Floyd Show. And Coach, give us a little spell of what it is that's going to take place this week in preparation and getting ready to go up to uh, Heritage and, and play the game that you want to see played. Well, I hope we improve, you know, from the start of the game to the finish. Uh, you know, it, it, obviously you prepare for each opponent um, that you're playing each week and what they do offensively, defensively, scheme-wise, but uh, really focusing on us, kind of getting back to fundamentals this week and, and making sure that we understand it's about doing your job, uh, you know, not only for yourself, but for your teammate. It's a team game, and there's other guys depending on you. So do your job and then do it with relentless effort. And uh, I think if we do those things, then we're going to continue to get better. Um, if we do not do those things, then any team on our schedule can beat us. Sure. And we have to make sure that we focus on those things, get better throughout the season, 
Uh, usually you make your biggest improvement from game one to game two. That didn't happen for us. So we're hoping this week it's from game two to game three. So that's what we're wanting to see, improvement for four quarters, consistency, uh, and then just relentless effort. And Heritage is not known for being one of the strongest opponents that you face. However, yep. they did have a pretty strong week uh, the yep. week before last and win, uh, you know, handedly. And that's improvement on their pace. So, I mean, it's yep. hard to say that this is going to be the heritage of old. You walk up there, you're not really sure, I guess, some of the fundamentals that you've seen in the past. Yeah, uh, like you said, in the past they've struggled. This is a different team. We need to respect every opponent. That's right. You know, we're not talented enough to walk out on the field, and, and nobody's going to give it to us, and they're not going to lay down. So we have to play our best ball game to win football games. Now, heritage is better than they have been. Yeah. Uh, they have better personnel. They've always been well coached. Their schemes can hurt you. Um, we do have an advantage in speed, so hopefully we can make some big plays and keep prevent them from making big plays on us. Uh, but uh, you know, you got to go out and execute. And if we don't execute better than we did for four quarters in the past two games, then we can come home, you know, very disappointed. Can you speak to Javon, uh, you know, stepping up in various roles as he's yeah. done the past couple of weeks? Yeah, and it, I, Javon deserves a lot of credit because he's playing running back. Yeah, which the is, interception that was yeah. outstanding this past. Yeah, week. you know, it's very tough to play running back at the 6A level. It's very physical, week in, week out. Um, and then you throw in the fact that he plays defensive back for us. And like you mentioned, he had a big interception. He's had some big tackles. Not only that, he's playing special teams. So you're talking about he's a guy that, all. yeah, he hardly and ever comes off the field. he's also coaching up on the sideline. Yeah, he's become a leader for us, a uh, great teammate. Uh, he's a competitor. He's always wanted to win, so that's not changed. But his role is really you – know, he's stepped up in his role this year, and he doesn't come awesome. off the field. Yeah, that is great. great kid. Well, I know you have, you have great players. You have great coaches. This senior year, a little bit weird. I'm glad you didn't have to do like the SEC and only play region opponents or yeah. something weird. So talk about the fundamentals of getting to start a season. You're still not in the middle of it yet, so I know you're looking at different things. We've always seen, you know, yeah. Javen with an injury, and yep. I, I guess he's going to be out for the rest of the season. Yes. And, you know, looking at a lot of things through a coach's eyes, what, what kind of things are on the horizon mentally, if you even want to speak about, you know? Well, I mean, it's a whirlwind every year. You know, there's yeah, so much true. going on. There's but so many moving just, parts. It, there, there is. But so many tentative elements. When you add COVID to it, <laughs> yeah. it's a whole other element. So uh, we're taking it day by day. Uh, you know, play by play, rep by rep. It's kind of coach's cliche, but it's the truth. You, you can't control, I can't control what happens tomorrow. The only thing we can control is the next step. And we're just trying to take the next step and be the best we can. Uh, so in saying that, injuries are also part of the game. They've always have been. Right. We hate to lose a player like Javen. It's a four-star athlete. You know, he's committed to Virginia. He's a smart kid, hard worker. He's a captain. Uh, you hate for any kid to lose their senior year. So that's frustrating, but it's also part of the game. It's part of life. And it's time for us to rally around Aiden and, and move forward. You know, we kind of have the next man mentality up. We've always had that mentality. So nobody feels sorry for us. Right. Nobody feels no, no. sorry that they don't have to we play have against Jaden. We have great Jayden. fans, and I think yeah. the fans are very outspoken when something like that happens. They're looking for Aiden to, yeah. you know, catch that wave now. And, yeah. Uh, I've mentioned right. it before. You know, Aiden, we have all the confidence in the world in Aiden. Sure. Uh, so it's time to rally. And, uh, you know, for us, well, we're taking it as the, the approach that our backs are against the wall and now everybody's doubting you guys, you know, because you do lose a player like Javen. They're, everybody thinks that they're going to circle you on the schedule and they think it's a win. So what are we going to do? That's right. Well, I, I'll guarantee you we're not going to lay down. We're going to come every Friday and we're going to give it everything we got. And this Friday is very special up at Heritage. Beautiful layout, place to, you know, see the scenic part of the Smoky. You're right at the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. And uh, hopefully a little bit cooler and not as so. much humidity. I think so. Uh, I think there's a cooling trend coming in this weekend. We'll see if that really takes effect and how that plays out. But for the most part, we want to see fans up there at Heritage. Hopefully you're making the trip and joining and, you know, putting a rally around this team as they go to Heritage and play their best game. So any other thoughts you want to put out there? Uh, we do appreciate the fans last week. You know, it was a great atmosphere and a rivalry game, so it's always great playing in Bear Stadium, obviously on the road this week. But, uh, you know, we're hoping to go up there and take care of business. Well, thanks, Coach, and uh, we look forward to this, this game this week and hope that you're there joining in. Until next time, I'm Gwen Schroer, Coach Damon Floyd. God bless and go Bears.